Thanks for watching DG Wrench Works and DIY. Today's video, we have a 2004 Giant OCR3. Pretty good budget bike. Pretty much the end of my budget series I've been doing. The first one I did two videos ago, 1999 Canada Dollar 300, the cheapest you could get back then. Before this, the last one is a Volano, Amazon's most popular budget bike. And I thought, I'd just gotten this right after I'd finished the Volano video, and I thought, wow, I'm gonna have to actually put my cool Cannondale video I was gonna do next on pause and do this because it really just fits perfect with the budget series I'm doing, and it really stacks up well against everything else. So let's get into it and see what we like. So one of the coolest things about this giant frame, hydroform. So you see some crazy looking aluminum tubing on this for something from the early 2000s and kind of from a branding that isn't that popular yet. But that doesn't stop there because it gets even weirder. This also has, and you hear a lot of people talking about how these, you know, the people that have these bikes say, man, I love how this bike rides. It has kind of a different geometry. It has what we call compact road meaning the seat tube is a little bit shorter. It's a 50 centimeter. I actually looked up the geometry for their medium. This is a size medium. And it has a 53 centimeter top tube. You can see it's clearly much larger, but it's, it helps you with comfort. And this is also something I found kind of surprising. Off camera, I have a CAD 4 right here against the wall I'm looking right at. And the seat stays and chain stays. It is shocking how similar they are from the beginning of the CAD 4 de designs. And it seems like something they did for durability and comfort because that's what they did for Cannondale. And it obviously helps with the geometry, of course, but the seat stays don't just have a curve this way, but they are also splayed out towards the rear here. And this is what's to help with, I'm assuming, sorts of dampening and stuff like this. I'm no frame builder, but this is what, you know, you notice on, on frame generations. It's just kind of surprising to see that, I mean, even the chain stays, Cannondale has this very squared flared out look to it and they are a little thicker here and maybe that's how they got away with it i'm not sure but this does have a lot of the big bonuses that a cad 4 has and it does ride like it it rides like a very high quality aluminum frame with that said i do have one minor complaint very little small pequeña the front fork is 775 grams it is a budget bike i get it it's aluminum it is a unicrown aluminum fork so for the, what it is, it's still gonna ride fairly good. It will do a decent job. It won't chatter your teeth out, but like some cheap aluminum ones from you know the 80s, but you could drop a fair amount of weight. You could drop two thirds of a pound, 0.66. So it'll be 300 grams difference, 775 grams for that front fork. If you swapped in one that I like to use, they're about $90 off of Amazon from Kinesis, I believe it is, or Kestrel, I can't remember which one. Pretty sure it's Kinesis. But uh, yeah, great budget fork. Much now, obviously, 20 years later, they're much more available and much more affordable. So it'd be a great bonus for it. But if you didn't want to do that, that's not really a big deal. One of my favorite things to do for something like this is to honestly just swap out the wheel set. That's a great way to drop weight and it's rotational mass. So technically, you'll be a little faster. You know, obviously, you probably won't feel it. But when you look at your rides and your climbs and your descents, you should be on paper a little bit faster. And that's something I did right off the bat here. I changed out the wheel for, this is a, obviously a little much for a budget bike, but uh, it's old and <laughs> it's been sitting in my parts pile and I wanted to put on something cool. So this is a HED Belgium rear wheel, not super high end. And actually these are the early ones. Uh, so it has a Novatech Chinese rear hub on it, but still much, much lighter than the Alex wheels that were on here before. I did keep the front because I only have a good rear to this wheel set. That is totally fine. 
The front is actually still fairly decent. It's radially laced, which helps a little bit with the weight, but you have a bigger guy like me, you might run into problems with keeping it nice and true. The radio, the radial lacing doesn't keep it as strong. When the spokes cross, that's like this here. That's like a 1X or whatever you might want to call it, 2X, 3X you might want on your wheels. This has no X. So you do forgive a little bit on the, the weight, but you also pick up a penalty on the durability. Like I said, not a huge thing. You just want to make sure they're true out of the box. The HED is a huge bonus, so we did drop a half pound just by switching out the rear wheel alone. This actually has a stock cassette on it too, so didn't want to change too much on the drivetrain. Kind of wanted to let that shine. This is a little bit of an underdog to me personally. Big fan of the, the Shimano Sora drivetrain on this. A lot of people give it hate because, I mean, the 9-speed Ultegra that was out in the early 2000s was a huge hit, and it was on all the top bikes, so... A lot of people, you know, they really want to have the best, basically. But to me, one of my first bikes I built was with the same exact drivetrain, actually. Uh, I used a rear derailleur Sora. This is a nice long cage. Really nothing wrong with it at all. That's a little bit of plastic right where it pivots, but nothing wrong with it durability-wise. And weight-wise, they're, they're fairly decent. They're going to be somewhere near the Claris weight anyways. For the front derailleur, it does have an issue with these where the spring is actually built up behind it and it actually pivots back and forth for the spring to have constant pressure like one side of it has to be locked in for it to roll forward otherwise there would be no pressure the little leg that's cast onto the front derailleur breaks off over time and it is super small it is very it's like the tip of a pencil small just kind of one of those things i mean it's supposed to be a budget bike what i've done is i've replaced this with a slightly different sora <laughs> They make 2200, 2300, 2203, 2202. Finding the specs on all of these different types of Soros is actually a huge pain now because they're 20 years old and they phased it out for Claris and everything else and the newer Sora. But it is what it is. It works great. The one that was on there that constantly breaks, it's all silver. This one that's on there, and this is the way you can tell, it is black. One cool thing too, the one, this one actually had a clamp on it. I did a video on this a long time ago, like, a long time ago uh you could actually swap the ends out here how they mount so i swapped the clamp out for a braze on and it works perfectly fine I actually put the clamp on the other derailleur which wasn't broken but the problem is it was rubbing a lot when it was cross chaining from you know if you're on the big ring like i am now going all the way to the back it would cross chain almost where it's at now on the third or fourth to the back which is a pretty big deal you it's normal to rub when you're going big big or small, small, but anyone next to either one of those, you're gonna be losing a lot of gears. You don't wanna be riding around your bike when it's like, ch -ch 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 -ch. not a very fun time at all. It's kind of annoying, it sounds like it's gonna break. So big bonus to get that swapped on there. Kind of fits it too, you know, got a bike all blacked out, wanna make it look cool. So we went ahead and did that. One nice bonus too, Tektro A521 brakes, these are long reach, but they are also high, high quality aluminum construction. So if you have to make a nice strong stop and you got your brakes set up tight, there's no flex to them or anything like that, they will lock the wheel up. We went ahead and swapped out the brake shoes. They had some plastic garbage brakes that kind of comes on all these budget bikes. It is what it is. It's easy to swap them out and it's very cheap. Parts will always be in my description, so you can check out everything I mentioned in there. And we have these Shimano pads swapped out on here. They actually, uh, these shoes come with some like kind of no-name copy Shimano's and I'll just save those for a different bike. I already had some new Shimano's, so I popped those in there. Like I said, stops no problem. Super great. Fits 28C tires without an issue. That's why you want to have a little bit of the longer reach. And this frame actually will fit up to 30C tires. So that is actually a huge bonus. These are also some of my favorite 28C tires. Continental Ultra Sports, but they do run big. So for these to fit as a 28C on this with tons of space, and I could stick my finger in here, down by the chain stays, up by the fork, you could do the same thing by the bridge or the brake there. There's no issue with clearance whatsoever. And it's kind of surprising to see that because in the early 2000s, there really was no, this is more of like the past 10 years, people are realizing you want to have a bigger contact patch for a more comfortable ride. Jacking up the pressure on skinny tires actually makes it way worse. So 
very cool to see that. And on my OCR video, which is obviously a little higher quality than this, but less of a budget bike, somebody commented that they fit 30, 30 Cs on that bike, no problem whatsoever. And these are exact same frames. So cool. The one thing though that OCR1 does have, not just Ultegra group set, but it also has a carbon fork. Kind of cool. So if you ever see one of those, a little better than the OCR3, but this is still a good bike. It shines, I'll tell you that. The Sora shifters, they get a little bit of a hate, I say. Uh, they have thumb shifters up top, which honestly, I think if you're a beginner rider, you need to learn to be in the hoods up there all the time. And that's kind of where you hit the little thumb shifters, right? Really, it's kind of just people nitpicking, if you ask me. They're still never have issues with, honestly, this is actually one of the only shifters I've never had issues with the bad grease in them. Surprising. They've never have issues with mist shifting, never have issues with adjusting. Super easy to throw it all together. Like I said, the rear derailleur went and no problems with it, with tuning it up or anything. And uh, all of it shifts perfectly. Very, very nice. Another huge bonus to me. I love having a bike that doesn't just fit big tires, but it also has a bike rack on it. And for whatever reason in America, I guess because cycling isn't as big in other, in other countries, especially for commuting, a lot more dangerous here. But yeah, we have the ability to put on a really nice bike rack. We put on a, a Ibera touring style bike rack so I could put all my goodies on here, like my rear bag. And I even have some pretty cool little paneers here. Oh no, wait, oops, let's go the other way. So I could hang those bad boys up if I wanted to right up here. I have one for each side. And you could really hold tons of stuff. I mean, you could literally go grocery shopping with all this. This thing's pretty big in here, so. One of my favorite things to see on a cheap budget bike like this, and, and it's really, it's, it's hard to do now. If you, if you want to get something like that, you're going to be paying a little extra, unfortunately, or you're going to have to buy a nice steel frame. The only thing I do not like that much, though, is the front fork. You know, it, it is a budget fork, as we mentioned. It does not have any raid guard mounts. So if you wanted to, you know, if you're in a really wet climbing, you might get a little wet from the front tire unless you get some specialty type ones that might mount on the fork blade maybe or on the brake nut. Uh, you'd have to find something specifically that would fit in there. Kind of annoying. Actually, I know they make one that fit on the down tube as well, but it would be a slightly, it is a little annoying. It'd be a slightly bit better to have the mounts on there, just if you ask me. That is being a little nitpicky though. When I first got this bike, it had some pretty cool upgrades on it already. It had a Le Mans seat post. That was actually only 191 grams. Very nice aluminum, high quality, but it was also very, very short. So first thing I want to do is throw a carbon seat post on there to complement our build here. That came out to 213 grams, 210 grams around there. Now the seat post is huge. It's like probably like here. It's like 350 millimeters or something, and you could easily cut off a couple inches if you wanted to without a doubt. Sometimes people run into on the shorter frames hitting a water bottle bolt, but no issues on this. I did change the seat out. It came with a pretty wide Bontrager seat. I'm on 90% positive it was a woman. So I just threw in a Origin 8, just your normal commuter style road bike saddle. Pretty nice and comfortable. Good budget saddle to go with it, of course. One thing specific to if you're not sure what your, your giant is or what you're looking at is the Alex wheel set. In 2005 and later, they move on to a paired spoke wheel set, which my OCR1 video I showed you, it has those kind of funky looking wheels. They're like XR220s or something off the top of my head. That was a couple years ago I made that video, but yeah, you'll notice it from that. Also, you will notice the crank set here. We have a Troubative Touring road style crank set, very high quality construction, very nice chain rings on it. Actually seems like brand new still no wobble or whatever whatsoever to the chain rings and we have an awesome stiff spider to it so you don't have to worry about like the volano only has a one piece so you want to change that out you have to take the whole stupid crank off <laughs> and throw it away i mean yeah it's kind of crazy and for this super easy to change take one off at a time some of the even cheaper budget crank sets are actually all the spider rings are together that's more on like the shimano mountain bike stuff or i guess suntour might do that too but Good to see on this, that is for sure. And really, that that probably about completes the build. I threw some carbon fiber spacers on there, of course. Cockpit has some pretty nice handlebars on it. I went ahead and double wrapped those just to make it extra comfy. I have some kind of old school yellow and black bar tape I don't like using, it's kind of ugly. So I hit that underneath there and put some nice yellow on top. And uh, yeah, it came out really, really nice. I'm pretty pleased with it. The final weight came out, we lost over a pound. 
it was 22 pounds and change when I first got it. And we are at 21 pounds and change, like 21 pounds and one ounce or something like that. And I mean, a lot of that is because uh, we put on weight. <laughs> the stem actually was a slight drop in weight, but like I mentioned, the seat post, of course, the tires, a ton of weight on that. I'm not sure if we gain weight or not on the brake stuff. That's kind of irrelevant, obviously, with the bar tape. You know, uh, I mean, I don't really care about gaining the weight and making it as light as possible. It is just nice to throw it all together and add some budget stuff and see where we come out because for whatever reason, this OCR3, I've been doing bikes for over 15 years now. <laughs> you go on Bike Blue Book, it will say, this bike's worth like $100-ish, $129 or something. And it's just hysterical to me because... Finding a frame that will fit 28C tires for under $100 is just blasphemy. It's it's very, very hard to do for something that's going to be modern. And uh, I did not want to forget, this has a traditional 1 and 1 8 straight fork, so you don't need anything special. You Like I was mentioning, you just use the Amazon one, and it will fit right in there, no problem, with the stock headset as well. Cool little stock headset on there. You can see the bearings are integrated into the frame traditional bearings very very easy to work on sealed bearings no ball bearings in there that you have to pack with grease and all that and then clean up all the grease and make sure you have gloves on and all this crap these are just like if you had a skateboard or a car or something like that these are just your normal cartridge sealed bearings and you just pop them right out and put your new one right in and slam it all together and you're done and that that pretty much is it i don't know if i mentioned it does have a zram pg850 pretty nice cassette on there that's pretty cool to see and that that's pretty much it i did add some nice little i'm i'm speed play gang i don't know if you guys like riding uh with or without shoes on but i i like using bike shoes i have some pretty neat ones and speed play are some of the best ones out there in my opinion so i had some nice little yellow ones to go with the flow of that and that that's pretty much it so yeah we built a pretty good budget commuter. I would out, honestly, out of all three of these bikes in the budget series, I'd have to say I am most happy with this one. Finding a budget like my Canada R300, that is a great bike, but it needed a ton of work, man. It took a lot more work to get that bike ready than it did to take this one ready, and there isn't that much difference in years apart of how long they've each been sitting unused. The big difference is a lot of the older stuff and the Shimano grease and... Yeah, tearing it all down and cleaning it all up and redoing it, it's a pain. So this was fun, refreshing. I'm, I'm glad to be back on a bike with a, uh, a, a seat rack and I have all my goodies here to build it all up now. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, you could please do that on Patreon. All will go to cool builds like this and other projects for the channel. And you could also support us on YouTube memberships. So please do that if you'd like to. So please do not forget to like and subscribe. It helps my small channel grow, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.